I don't know if you heard about the start of my day, but... That's not a fun day. After we get everybody in the water, Renee gave me his kayak cart so that I could get my 150-pound kayak in, you know, down to the water. So I start going down this path that's brand new, never used it before. Everyone else was launching at the beach, but it was too busy for me there. So I head down this little rugged path with this cart that I've never used before, and I'm trying to jig it, jig my kayak back and forth this way. I finally get down to the beach, and there's a huge drop. I didn't even see the drop. Drops down, my entire kayak flips off to the side. All of my gear, didn't go in the water, but all of my gear that I had set up on there, tips. It was perfect, perfect start to the day. Yeah, it's just exactly what you want before you get on the water. I didn't decide until 40 seconds before the gun. I knew where there was chub upriver. I found them last week. Actually, right before I heard the whistle, my, change, my plan changed. There was probably over a dozen people looking to head upriver. As soon as I noticed that, somebody made a joke about how many of us are going to follow Renee, and I kind of laughed it off, but... Right, um, let's, let's chase Renee. Yeah. Stay with us. Probably I looked at my watch, and there was a minute left. I turned my kayak around. <laughs> a pile of people went upriver, and the rest went downriver. So I just stayed there for the first 20 minutes, and literally within the first few minutes, I had a small mouth. It was only small, even if it's only five inches. Five inches adds up. Well, what I meant was let's get something big. A whole game plan went out the window as two minutes from the shotgun start. See you, Renee. Nice boulders down here. Where am I? Oh, no. I was right at the front. Renee, John Kale, and myself, which I assumed they were heading to where I was going, which was the end of the boundaries. 8.03, I look down in the water, and I see a school of four striped bass Ooh. swim by. Nothing. Get my rod out, buddy. We'll talk to you later, eh? Renee keeps going. Reaching back, grabbing my rod, putting my striper gear on, chucking it in their striper's face. I knew I wasn't gonna catch it, but I saw them. So my game plan was get as far as I possibly could in the boundaries, saw those four stripers, stop. Spent 25 minutes trying to catch a striped bass in that spot. This is already my game plan messed up. There's nothing here, just keep moving. <laughs> I'm like, oh. I've been getting nothing but snags so far. Uh, here, first small mouth of the day. Oh, John, John's got a fish. John, I was, I was aiming for that one, buddy. <laughs> I can't believe I'm gonna measure it, too. Oh, you gotta measure it. Gotta take a picture of it. Might be the only smallmouth I see all day. I think I might've got a snag. All right, last, last cast, throw it out, nothing. Forget it, back to the game plan. Can't be wasting time there. Pack my, put my rod back in, starting to go again. I see a long nose sucker sitting on the bottom of the, <laughs> right beside where the bass were. So I stop my boat again. They're right there. They're just sitting around. Let's see if we can catch one. And I wasted almost probably the first hour of my day just watching fish. It was horrible. I hated it. Taking his first picture of the day, Rene Peltier with an 8.5 inch white perch. Brian Cothra with a 7.75 inch pumpkin seed sunfish. John Kale with a 9.35 inch catfish. Only the top five places give points. So if you end up finishing 10th and you didn't catch the target species, you're not gonna get any points whatsoever. Mind you, if you catch the target species, the three target species, white perch, yellow perch, and pickerel, it doesn't matter if you finish 36, you're still gonna get a point. I was really after the lunker points this, this tournament. I was trying to get that combination. The chain pickerel was all I had in my head. I, I thought I was ahead of the game at noon when I had a white perch and a yellow perch. John Kale's right over there. Probably knocking off a few small species. Yeah. If, if you can't catch yellow perch, that river system, you need to go back to the, back to your, back to the launch 
and take your kayak out of the water. It's absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. You're, you're trying to get by that. So when you're trying to get the little species, yes, the, the yellow perch are going to take your bait more often than not. Uh, when you're sucker fishing, there's often perch around. Like if you're using worm or if you're using any type, other type of lure for the sucker fish, it has to get from the surface to the bottom. <laughs> Nine times out of ten, the perch grabs it first before it hits the bottom. Targeting pickerel, targeting pickerel, targeting pickerel, or, or white perch, try, trying to get one and not getting them. At least I was entertained because I at least have something that I could take off. I'm like, okay, there's another yellow perch, and just pitch it aside. I went down, and there was one spot I knew I could catch those three, so white perch, yellow perch, and pickerel. Uh, caught my 11-inch, and then I knew that there was white perch there, but I really had to just stick to the plan of keep catching yellow perch until a white perch finally decided to bite. Oh yeah, it's like mosquitoes in the woods. No joke. Nobody wants to catch that many yellow perch. But this is all tidal water now. We just need to find a deep enough spot. You know what? Every day on the water is uh, a learning event. I can't believe what I'm doing. Uh, Quiz Pan was definitely a learning event for me. Could have been better, but that's on me. Do I don't want to point bag? any fingers. Oh God, where does, where's that business? 